Hello and welcome to this video. This will be a little bit different than the previous ones because, well, first of all, I'm recording this one with Hannah. She's standing right there and you will see Hi. her very, very soon. Uh, and we're also recording this video as part of the course for beginners in orienteering. And we thought that this one is actually pretty, pretty cool to show to everyone because in this one, we're going to be talking about the stop and go strategy that uh, is a strategy that is very mm -hmm. often used by beginner runners and we're going to demonstrate how it looks like, explain what it's all about and also make some comparison between stop and go and just standard running with the full flow and, and not stopping along the way. If this is your first time to the channel, this is Into the Forest I Go where we are talking about orienteering a sport when you run with the map and compass and my name is Tom. I have been an orienteering coach for many years and it is my pleasure to share some of the um, w some of the wisdom, some of my experiences with you. So stay tuned. If you want to watch more about orienteering, there are, there are already plenty of videos on the channel. So just go and explore. And before we move to the topic, I also want to uh, thank everyone who supports us through Patreon and through other just, you know, even commenting under the video. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And if you want to join this beautiful bunch of people, then the description, uh, sorry, the link to the Patronite will be in the description of this video, so do check it out. And now let's talk about the stop and go. So I will move over here so that you can see me Hello. and Hannah together. And stop and go essentially is all about running with the map uh, when you know where you're going to and then stopping when you need to um, orienteer yourself, make sure yes. that you know what the next point is uh, where you're going to run towards. So for example, uh, we are over here and Hannah will have a short course to run around 300, 300, maybe 50 meters around, uh, around this area. So I will ask her to go in that direction towards the vegetation boundary, yeah. then to the rootstock behind the vegetation boundary. Then she will follow some paths and she will come back here from that direction, from the top of the hill. And she will be punching the control in the pit that is right over here. You don't see it, but it's, it's, it's right behind us. So that's essentially it. And we will do an experiment in which we will try to figure out first which technique is more taxing. So after, yeah. after which one Hannah will be more tired. I, it will be very, uh, you know, based just on her feelings, very subjective. So it's not like a great experiment, but I think it's still going to be quite interesting. I'm not doing this because the distance is just too short for me and I will probably feel fine after both runs. Uh, but for her, it's already something that probably yeah. she will feel a bit. <clears throat> also, I will measure the time. So we, we will see uh, how well uh, in terms of uh, time, both of those will serve. And Hannah shouldn't have any problems finding the controls essentially in the terrain. So I, I'm guessing that she will not lose any time on mistakes. So the difference should be coming simply from uh, the running speed and from the brakes that Hannah is yes. going to be taking while doing stop and go. And of course, also while doing, st doing stop and go, she will also uh, try to run a bit faster after the breaks, because any break you take, yeah. you catch some additional breath, so you're able to run a little bit faster. So let's see mm -hmm. how that turns out and let's see where it takes us. Uh, before she goes onto the first loop, so to say, um, I want to be clear about what stop and go is. So what stop and go is, uh, or, or what is or what is it all about, is that you want to start navigating in a way that you always know where you're going to it. At the beginning, yes. when, when you don't know about orienteering a lot and you're not that good at reading the map fast, you won't be able to match your map reading pace with your running abilities, right? So you will feel a lot faster, but you won't be able to run because you won't understand the map completely just yet. So you will be spending more time reading the map compared to the, the runner that is more experienced. And therefore, what it results in is that very, very often the beginning runners are looking at the map a lot longer than um, uh, experienced orienteers. So Hannah will be simulating that by uh, stopping at some important points <clears throat> during her loop, right? So at any point in mm -hmm. time where we figure that this is the, the moment where the runner will stop. Oh my God, there is a squirrel over there. She's so little and cute. I don't know I if you guys squirrels. see it, but there is a squirrel over there. No, it's not visible. Oh, she's climbing the tree now. But it's not visible. It's a camera. little bit visible. A bit. Okay, this camera doesn't have the zoom, yeah. but... 
Well, if you saw it, you saw it. If you didn't see it, bad luck. <laughs> anyway, where was it I? It was so cute. <laughs> where was I? Um, um, yeah, so, so Hannah will be simulating those stops along the way, just like uh, she did at the very beginning of yeah, her of orienteering course. journey, where uh, she definitely was stopping mm -hmm. uh, while uh, g getting to some orienteering points because she had to collect herself. She had to figure out what to do next, what yeah. is the next point she's going to be navigating to. And then when she raises her head, she uh, realizes what's uh, the next element she's going to, fo to, to follow, the next element she's going to get to, maybe she will already be able to see it, then she can run faster towards that, then stop over there, uh, collect herself again, orienteer the map, set the map, and make sure that uh, she knows the um, next leg of, the, of her path, so to say. Yes. Uh, so that's what stop and go is all about. And um, I, I want to mention over here that there is nothing wrong with this technique you know especially for the beginners if you want to uh, be smooth or, or or you know have a flow in your orienteering then it's definitely something to strive for but it doesn't mean that stop and go is something bad it's basically something that we all go through one way or another yes. so i've been doing that hannah has been doing that and everybody who has been doing orienteering has been doing stop and go at some point in their orienteering journey so don't be uh, shy about this don't be afraid to explore the stop and go and um, it's definitely uh, something that you simply need to go through to get better yeah all right definitely. anything else i should add no i think just running <laughs> i think it's just running left yeah so hannah grab the map all right uh, i will move the camera to the other direction you grab the map and I'll grab your microphone. Have fun on your first loop. Wait, wait, wait. I still need to sure, turn sure. on the timer. timer. I just want so to know where we let are. me switch to the timer on my watch. And this is my course. All right, I see it. I can start from the pit, actually. Yep, all right. So I'll just stand here. Good. I am ready. So whenever you're ready. And she's coming back. There you go. There you go. So the time is two. 35. 2.35 is your time. Uh, how do you feel? Remember how you feel in terms of the strength? You, this was your normal running pace, right? So, yeah. so you were pretending that you're running a longer race, not just 300 meters, right? Um, but, uh, and you tried to keep the, the similar kind of speed. Maybe. Yeah, you don't have your microphone, but yeah. that's okay. That's okay. Um, so, um, for me, it was pretty tiring. As you can hear. Yeah, it's a little bit uphill. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it was a little bit uphill. Uh, I uh, went like two steps. Uh -huh. I wasn't running uh, over here. Maybe so, I don't know. Uh, that's because I wasn't sure where to go, like uh -huh. the direction. Um, but I, I, I fastly did that and I fa fallen. Yeah, I was running and I fell. You like, fell? Yeah, I fell pretty badly actually, <laughs> but I didn't want to mess up the experiment. So then for like two seconds, I was sprinting. Okay. To so like <laughs> to catch up the, yeah, the lost time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I get it. So uh, so while but, while taking the break now, mm -hmm. uh, let's show the loop that you were running okay, through. Okay. Okay. Let's show sure. the loop. Mm. So uh, we are right here. Wait a little bit. Let's put yeah, the map okay, completely okay. into the shade, mm -hmm. and then it will be easier to read. So we are right here at right. this bit. At this bit, yes. And my first control was over here. There's a rootstock. Under, uh, under the yeah, line, right? Yeah, under the line, uh, there's a rootstock. So and you're basically running to the vegetation yeah, boundary and following the yes. vegetation boundary to Second the Second control was over here. Right, at the forking of the yes. paths. And you're running through the forest or following paths? No, following paths. Okay, following like paths to this one. And then my third control was coming, again here. Coming back yes. here to, to me, so it's, e it's easy because yeah. I'm st standing here in a blue jacket so you <laughs> can see me from far away. Yes. Cool, all right. And so, okay, we will take a few minutes of the rest for you mm -hmm. before you go to the second loop. This loop was not stop and go. This loop was just straight running. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This loop was just straight running. So the next one will be stop and go mm -hmm. and then we will be able to compare. Uh, by the way, if you guys are wondering, 
then uh, we are in the forest today because we are recording those videos for this course that I mentioned at the beginning. Yeah. We've already recorded several of them, like the introduction and um, the, the video about setting the map, the video mm -hmm. about the linear features, the video about map features. We've been walking around here uh, in this beautiful forest, beautiful weather as well. It's absolutely stunning here yeah. today. And uh, we've been showing several um, different features that you will see on the map and showing how they look mm -hmm. like in the terrain so that the beginner runners can understand what is what. We're obviously not going to show everything because the, the, this map doesn't have everything. Uh, yeah. So I will be re-recording some more materials on, on more interesting maps uh, a little bit further into the future. I do estimate that the course should be ready somewhere around uh, mid-vacation, uh, so somewhere towards the end of uh, July, hopefully, possibly. Mm -hmm. If you are interested in the course, if you're club is maybe interested in the course then first of all you can reach out to me uh, if you represent the club and you want to talk about how you can access the course for uh, more than just one person and if you just want if you are just a single person that is interested in orienteering and you want to uh, be in touch with when the course is released and how to access it then in the description of this video there will be a link to sign up for the mailing list so do that and uh, you will get notified whenever the course, course is either released or getting getting close to being released. And now, Hannah, you rested? Uh, maybe a bit more. Maybe a bit more? Yeah, like maybe one minute. One minute more. Okay, so I will stop the video here. Uh, at least this part of the recording we will ha let Hannah rest a little bit and we will go for the second loop in a moment. All right, so unfortunately, as you saw, the second or the last part of the recording was with no sound. So even though we, I could put some music while Hannah is running the loop and I'm following her, the rest of the sum up and the conversation is lost. So we had to re-record it. So here we are back at home uh, the next day, really, and talking again about the second loop. So the yeah. first loop was normal. The second loop was stop and go. 
normal means smooth running, uh, mm -hmm. trying to not make any stops. The second loop was um, stop and go. How did you feel? Do you remember uh, still yeah, how you felt after um, the second loop? Uh, I think it was definitely less tiring for me. Uh, just because when you stop, you like gain a little bit of energy, even though it was like like three to five seconds. It still gave like the power to run, um, especially when we were running after the first control uh, uphill. Then uh, on the first, uh, not stop and go, like just running. It was really hard for me, and I had to push myself to run that. And when we stopped at the control for like five seconds, it was actually much better, and it was like more convenient for me. And the second thing, um, definitely, it was um, I, I felt safer, uh, like um, because when I was running, I have to, had to be like concentrate uh, on, on everything, literally, to just not get lost. Uh, and uh, with the stop and go, I felt like I'm much more safe and uh, like my brain is not working that hard that I can just um, uh, feel feel more comfortable in uh, while running just to have, you know, that uh, more control feeling. Over yeah, what's yeah, going on. That, that feeling. I'm that... very happy that you remember that you said that yesterday as well, because I think this is a very important yeah. part of the, you know, whole um, uh, emotions and, and feelings that you get after the experiment you want to change your pose yeah good. okay so um, first of all you were in terms of tiredness the second loop I think we both remember that it was a little bit less yeah. tiring right yes a little bit less tiring so you, you felt a little bit less tired towards mm -hmm. the end and I think it's because of the breaks right yeah definitely um, that, but but it's also worth mentioning that as we agreed we you were trying to run a tiny bit faster yes um, in between the breaks mm -hmm. to kind of simulate how the stop and go normally looks like because yeah. with stop and go you usually go a little bit faster than when you have a, a smooth pace uh, mm -hmm. a, a, along the race so even though you were going a little bit faster you didn't feel that tired no. which could suggest that your time was longer, longer. right it, yeah. it took longer during the second loop the stop and go loop how do you feel mm. uh, about the time i mean by now you know yeah but, but, but your, your know, yesterday's estimate was that it was so i uh, i thought that it's like 10 to 20 seconds longer because the first one was uh, two minutes and uh, 35. 35 so yeah. i thought it will be like two minutes and 50 maybe 45 something like that yeah and it turns out that the second loop was almost the same as the, as yeah. the first one. It was 2 minutes and 37 seconds. So just 2 seconds of that a difference between really... the first loop and another. And of course, <clears throat> this so-called by us experiment is not a real experiment because it has lots of flaws. Yeah. The, 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 the main one is um, that... Of course, it highly depends on how much time you will spend on reading the map while taking yeah. those stops, right? It's, it's hard to measure, hard to predict. So uh, Hannah tried to simulate it as best as she can. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that also it was adjusted to more or less your current level of yes. orienteering. If we did the same experiment three years ago, right? Yeah. The, these stops probably would be longer. Yeah. And, I, and I mean, I, I remember when I was walking with her when she was learning orienteering and sometimes during those stops yes. I was just standing there like, come on, it's like it's been half a minute or one minute. How hard can it be to figure out that you just need to follow the same yeah, path? Yeah, right? I have a friend that went to the training with me once and uh, she, she was like, uh, I was like, okay, where are we? Uh, we were like stopping and I was uh, checking if she knows where she is. And I was like, okay, where are we? And she's like here. And then like uh, 100 meters um, uh, later, I, I, I asked her where we are and she like uh, pointed like literally I don't know, the road on the other end of the map. And I was like, how? We, we were here. How, how did we like teleport? <laughs> so it's not easy at the beginning. Yes. So, so those breaks, you know, yeah. you will be probably, if you are a beginner, you will be probably taking longer, longer breaks definitely. at the beginning. And that's absolutely fine because you want to learn how to navigate with the map mm -hmm. and you can only learn it by uh, reading the map and yes. understanding the map. Right? Of course, it's also okay to make mistakes, but the most important part is to learn from those mistakes mm -hmm. and you will be getting better and better in time. Um, another thing that I want to mention regarding, you know, again, the, the, the experiment is that it, it will also depend on the physical shape of the runner. 
So uh, the, yes. the, the runner that is better physically will probably feel a little bit more convenient in the, um, in the smooth pace because mm -hmm. he or she will have the strength to just go on and push forward. Hannah doesn't really do mm, any no. endurance training. No. So for her, stop and go might still feel a lot more natural as, as for almost every kid it will. Uh, so yeah, that, that's just how it is. How did you like the experiment? It was very fun. I, uh, I really was shocked by the time difference. Like two seconds is like literally almost nothing. Well, some will not agree with me because like... Uh, but, but it was just, you know, two seconds yeah. and, and two minutes. But yeah. your race normally is like 30 minutes, right? So yes. it's times 15, which gives you half a minute loss of time, uh, yeah, even so... if you, we would keep the same ratio. Yeah, but but it's... Uh, I, I was really shocked about the time and I, I had fun doing it. Like, um, I had to... Um, do something that I am not used to because always I'm just okay just go and run with the map just uh, guide your pace as you want to and now I was like okay run and the, the thing that I was most uh, cautious about was like okay run but don't stop or okay run stop here right and so so yeah so it was definitely very fun and something new for me definitely interesting yeah. if you guys want to see more experiments uh, in terms of which orienteering techniques are better compared to another or stuff like that, let us know in the comments. The weather is finally good enough to go into the forest, <laughs> into the forest I go, <laughs> and, uh, and, and record these kind of things. So I'm, I'm not absolutely open to that. I have several ideas, but I'm also willing to hear what you want to uh, see, what you want to test out. And let's build something interesting and make uh, material out of it and for everyone to enjoy, I guess. All right. Um, did I forget about anything? No, I don't think so. Cool. So if you've liked this video, consider giving it a like. If you're not subscribed to the channel, then subscribe. If you won't subscribe, Hannah will kill our bunny. Oh, maybe do it the other way. <laughs> if you will subscribe, I will kill our bunny. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. I'll be seeing you probably with Hannah sometime Bye. in the future or in the next video. Bye. Hannah, I don't think we should talk about killing our bunny in front of other people. Oh, and in front of him. Do you think he understands? Yes. God damn it. I think he might be a little bit sad. For sure. <laughs> He's mad. I'll put him down. Okay, bye for sure. Bye. We love you. Yes. We love you. <laughs> Oops.